Hey everybody, time for a brand new vlog. So, let's talk about Daredevil. Because, why not? So, I've been hearing a lot about the Daredevil TV series. And I thought it was something that was only on HBO or... Uh, no, actually, it's... Unbeknownst to me, it's a, it's a Netflix series. And if you have Netflix, which I do, it's first season. It's available right there right now. So last night I attached it to my queue, started watching, did not stop until six in the morning, finished last two episodes today. So let's get my thoughts on it right now. This show is very good. It's really good. I really like it. Uh, relatively small to vaguely unknown cast, at least for the leads anyway. Uh, Charlie Cox plays our hero of Matt Murdock, Daredevil. Uh, Deborah Ann Wool plays Karen Page, who you're introduced to immediately on episode one. Eldon Henson plays Foggy Nelson. And we have a few other people who do come into play uh, a few episodes later or even further into the very first season. We have Rosario Dawson, which was a big surprise, who plays Claire. Uh, though her character really seems to disappear about halfway through and you kind of never see her again. I do wonder if she will be back for the second season. Um, and of course you got Scott Glenn as... Uh, the mentor and trainer, Stick, and uh, Vondi Curtis Hall as as uh, Ben Urich, and a few other people who I've seen before, one other who I haven't, uh, Elite Suri as uh, Vanessa Fisk, or just Vanessa. I'm, I'd like to try to avoid spoilers for, for this vlog, but that's probably not going to happen. Uh, Bob Gutton as Owl, or as um, Layden, as I believe he's mostly called. And, of course, we need to talk about Vincent D'Onofrio as Wilson Fisk. Uh, he's never referred to as Kingpin all throughout the very first season. I don't even think anybody even calls him Kingpin. Everyone just calls him Fisk. Uh, overall, the show is very good. Uh, the acting is very good. The dialogue is spot on. A lot of the characters are very good. Uh, a lot of the acting is very spot on. Um, my only real complaint was that very early on, with a lot of the action scenes with Daredevil, is that there are so many times when because it's at night, or because they're fighting in a dark hallway, and everything is shot in almost the dark, you tend to miss a lot of the action, or not really be able to see anything. Thankfully, some of that is made up pretty later on in, in an episode where you won't see much of a fight during, during the first half of the episode, but thankfully by the end you get to see everything, thankfully. Um, my only other negative comment, I would say, is Vincent D'Onofrio as Wilson Fisk. He does a good enough job and is very good at being very intimidating, especially when he needs to be very intimidating and scary and, and a sort of larger-than-life figure. The only thing that's kind of... I'm going to say different about his performance as the Kingpin, is that, because we've only really had two portrayals of the Kingpin. Uh, there, of course, was from the Spider-Man animated series, and then there was the Daredevil live-action movie, which I'm trying to remember the name of the actor who played him. And I know he died uh, a few years ago. I just, sadly, I can't remember his name. For, for the life of me right now. And I'm sure it's going to come to me later and I'm going to kick myself for it. And, I mean, I suppose it's the same thing 
you know, and I've enjoyed him in what I've seen him in. I mean, really, the only thing I've really enjoyed him in was uh, the Law and Order Criminal Intent. And he's kind of doing that same thing he's doing here, where he's very awkward. He seems very shy, almost kind of timid at times, you know, with how he'll talk and perform and all that. And uh, except when he gets thoroughly enraged, then it's just all rage. It's all anger. And there's no holding back. And I always thought of the Kingpin as being uh, a man in charge. Now, I suppose you could say, like, well, this is the Kingpin sort of starting out. Um, though, I think he's had quite a lot of time of being in charge already. But, um, I mean, all in all, I mean, he does, he does a good enough job. And he does give a lot of very stirring performances, especially. And over time, I got used to it, and I really began to really enjoy a lot of his performance. I mean, everybody here does a very good job. Everybody does an excellent job. And, I mean, that was just why I kept on watching and why, why I wanted to watch more. This show is absolutely excellent. Yeah, I'm sure there are problems that could be pointed out, or but that might seem like nitpicking or anything like that. I've only ever and I just watched all these. Uh, I just watched all these episodes last night and today uh, through one entire sitting, and I can't really think of anything else that I really had a problem with. Uh, maybe certain characters doing said things later on that just might have seemed stupid, but because of everything that happened and had happened, those were kind of the choices that they decided to make, but everything comes back around by the end of the series. And there were quite a few surprises. There were, there were a few times when I knew or guessed what was going to happen. Like, I figured, like, this person is probably going to die. And oftentimes I was wrong about a, about a prediction that I had. But nonetheless, I was still in, I was still engrossed in everything that was going on. I was very much enjoying it. And, you know, and what's different about a show like this to a show like Game of Thrones is that uh, for me, watching Game of Thrones is very difficult because I'm terrifyingly nervous thinking and knowing that at some point somebody's going to die very quickly. And that happens all the time in Game of Thrones. At least it feels like it all the time in every episode. Somebody's going to die. It's going to be somebody you just met and they're going to die brutally. And thankfully in this, they don't do that right away. I mean, it does happen to quite a few characters. Uh, some of them pretty deserving of it. Some of them not so much. And, you know, and some of them kind of become a catalyst for what happens and what sort of changes as the show goes on. Uh, the Daredevil costume, the, you know, the original costume that he starts off with, uh, it looks good. There were a few times where I kept on kind of jokingly saying to myself, he looks like Todd in the Shadows a little bit, you know, especially uh, with the black mask, you know, you just pulled over like half of his face. I mean, I'll throw up a picture to kind of emphasize my point. Uh, and the Daredevil costume that he does finally put on in the last episode near the end, I think, probably about 15 minutes close to the end of the episode. I mean, when you just see the still shot of it that that Netflix uses to advertise it, which, yeah, was a dumb thing to do, because 
that's kind of the capper for the end of the show. But when you finally see it, it does look really good. It does. And, and it works. Uh, I think it mostly works especially because they don't show all of it. Uh, it's a lot like the way uh, the Batman suit works, where sometimes it's better if you don't see the whole thing. So, all in all, I think that's everything I'm going to say so far on everything that I've seen from Season 1 of Daredevil. Um, I want to see more of it, especially, and I don't know if there is a Season 2 that's already going on right now, or if, you know, or... Or if it just ended, and now they're just, you know. But, yeah, I mean, this was great. Uh, this was, this is very good, and I, I look forward to seeing more. How about, until next time, you guys let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys next time.